Hello, my name is James, and today we're going to explain and go through some of the steps and installation processes of what we call a PDTR1. And what I'm going to explain today is the proper installation procedures, some of the material that's being used, and what it is that I need to see whenever I show up on a job site. So stick with me, we're going to go through some of this as we talk about it. So this electrician has now given me a call to come by and make sure that this is built and poured to our dimensions and our specifications. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go over all this stuff and we're going to measure it, make sure it's done, and I will give him a call to let him know what it is that I found out. So whenever I show up on a job site, what I like to be able to see is something that's clean and done professionally well. This contractor has done a great job by having his job site clean. We've got the proper material used according to our standards installed. We have the proper aggregate, and we also see a nice level pad. There's, enough, there, there's just enough fall for whenever the moisture hits it, it's gonna run off the back. This particular area is gonna have a 300 kVA transformer, primary being on the left, secondary being on the right. That is always the way things are, is, is non-negotiable. That's the way the manufacturer makes the transformers. And on this particular area, we always have a six inch lift above finished grade. So once everything is completed and done and finished and then at this location, this transformer will be six inches above finished grade. So let's go through some of the standards now. So now what I'm gonna do is the first thing I do is I actually measure the, the outside and inside dimensions of the window and everything it is that I see in front of me. So this is the first step. So this is gonna be a six by seven foot transformer pad. This contractor has exactly six feet from inside to inside dimensions. And then I go to the side. Should be seven feet. We have exactly seven feet. Now I'm gonna measure the front of the window and there's a concrete lip here and where our transformer sits us. This is gonna be six inches or should be. And the contractor has done exactly six inches. And now we're going to measure the inside of the window, which should be three foot, one inch from one corner to the next. Three foot, one inch exactly. And now we're gonna measure across, which would be, should be 16 inches exactly. 16 inches perfectly. So keep in mind, this is the inside of the window. So when you're building this on the inside, remember inside dimensions instead of outside dimensions. It gets a little confusing. So now what I'm also going to measure is the offset of this window. Some of our old standards had this window placed directly in the center of the pad. Our new standards, because of the manufacture of the transformers now, have an offset type siding. So what we're going to look for is on this left side should be 29 inches. And that's 29 inches exactly. So on the right side, we're going to be looking for 18 inches, again, for this offset. And once again, 18 inches exactly. So let's talk about this 8-inch window from the primary to the secondary side. What we're looking for here is it's, it's a, it's a no-work zone. On our, on our transformers, we have a window here, or a, uh, a, a dividing wall, a barrier between the primary and the secondary side. So when you guys come pull wire, or the electrician come pulls wire, the transformer still can be heated up on the primary side. We typically de-energize the secondaries for the secondary side to be pulled, but the, but the primary elbows are still energized. So we have, this pri we have this barrier right here that keeps you safe from being anywhere near these. So what we're also going to look for this now is this 8-inch no work zone barrier. From the secondary side to the primary side, we have over 8 inches. So we have more than enough to place this transformer here. And we're not going to have any issues with the primary versus secondary. So what I'm going to talk about now is the actual standards in which this thing is uh, put together. So a PDTR1, being a concrete pad, is going to be a 6 by seven foot pad. We're gonna have a three foot by one inch window with a six inch front, an eight inch on the inside no-go zone. 
the opposite side over here is going to have 29 inches of space and we're going to have 18 inches of space on the right. So in all transformer junction cabinet locations, most of our equipment requires whenever the doors open up is going to have a 10 foot clearance or more. There's always a 3 foot radius around the outside of our equipment and a 10 foot out the front. So on this location, the doors are going to be opening up this way. So there's nothing allowed to be planted or placed in front of the transformer. This is for safety operations. We have to have room to be able to work on this material and work on this equipment. So now we're going to talk a little bit about some of the in interior standards. This contractor has done perfect job as far as using the material it is that we require. It is okay to use larger material, so what we're going to talk about is the minimum. The minimum that he has used here is a number 10 mesh wire for his layout, and for his grid on the rebar, he's used 3 8 and that's what we require. When you look at that standard and you look at all of the notes on the bottom, you'll see the exact measurements and requirements it is that we require by City Utilities engineering standards to support this type of transformer. We use a 3,000 PSI concrete or higher. Also, we require you to be able to put in a ground rod and we like to have it anywhere on the primary location side. And we also require these pulling bells. These pulling bells here, as you see, have, have a rounded edge. And this protects our, pi our primary wire whenever it's being inserted into the pipe or being pulled through. On the end of this PVC you see here is what they call an FA fitting. This contractor had to dig a little bit deep in order to maintain depth, but also get underneath some existing utilities. So this contractor has used a 36 inch radius galvanized sweep. And on the end of that radius, on the top side, he used an FA fitting. He come out the top with a piece of PVC pipe, approximately four inches, and once he's done with the concrete, right now it's taped off, once he's done with the concrete, these pulling bells will be installed on the primary side. What's in the ground off of the 36 inch radius galvanized sweep is a five foot, minimum five foot stick of galvanized two inch as well. And on the end of that, you will also find this FA fitting, which now transitions to PVC if this was a four inch area, it would go directly to a riser location or it goes to a junction cabinet location which where you'll find three primary elbows done the same way in here. Now the reason for that five inch stick of galvanize is it's an anchoring point. So when we're pulling wire, the cable is heavy from the other end and we're pulling this up. We don't want to break or loosen these elbows that's in the ground and pull them up out of the ground. So that five foot stick is a minimum requirement as an anchoring point to keep these elbows secure in the ground and locked in place. If you have any questions about installation, specifications, or problems, please don't hesitate to give City Utilities Inspection a call at 417-450-7347. You can also call 417-863-9000, follow the prompts, and be able to speak with somebody to get you to the answers it is that you need to have. As always, be safe, call in locates, and have a great day.